your phone of homework today, mister! Run, Lloyd! Run for your life! <laughs> hey! You ain't garbage! Yes! Superlative! I was worried, Lloyd! Another boring assembly. This better not be one of those talks about checking our gills for lobster mites. I don't care what they talk about. I think assemblies are fun. Likewise, Kurt. Vice Principal Feely always endeavors to engage our young minds. We are the Jumper Or, in the standard language of this quadrant, welcome. Now, I know what you're all thinking, but no, this is not the latest craze or some hip new fashion statement. This beautiful article I'm wearing is the traditional headdress of the cockroach people. Or as we say in Kukurachis, a ticka ticka a ticka tick. I proudly wear this ticka ticka a ticka tick to help kick off Luna Vista's first annual or cultural pride fair to be held this Saturday at Intrepidville Community Park. <laughs> Now, I expect to see a booth from each and every one of you. Show us the food, the crafts, the dances, all those wonderful traditions that make you who and what you are. And to kick things off, I'm now going to perform a ballet from my own cockroach culture called The Day the Big Shoe Squashed My Village. <laughs> That was beautiful! Uh, if you've seen the cockroach ballet once, you've seen it a thousand times. Man, this cultural pride fair is gonna be lame. To me, this fair seems a wonderful excuse to research our heritage. There's no telling what wonderful surprises will turn up. Yeah, right. My family comes from Earth. Since when have Earth people done anything interesting? Well, you did invent the hot dog. Hey! Yeah! I forgot all about our junk food accomplishments! Oh, I wish I was from Earth! Not to worry, Kurt. I'm sure you Blobulons have plenty to be proud of. If you like, I'll help you investigate. Thanks! Now I suggest we begin by querying our parents. Parents are always eager to pass family knowledge on to the next generation. Mom, Dad, there's something I need to ask you. Why, sure, son. What is it? Where do we come from? Well, when I yelled, time for dinner, you came in from the living room, your father was in the bathroom, and your sister was already in here with me. No, what I mean is, where do we come from? You know. Oh, well, we were going to wait till you were a little bit older for that time. Tina, you better go eat your dinner in the living room. Okay, dokie. All right, son. Now, when a mommy and a daddy Blobulon love each other very much, they go down to the cabbage patch and... I don't know what you're talking about. I just want to know where our people, the Blobulons, come from. Oh. Oh. Well, son, we don't know much about that. Besides, uh, it's not polite to talk with your mouth full. So let's eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Er, so you want to know more about our culture, do you? Indeed! I'm eager to learn all about our cerebellian heritage, our accomplishments, our history! Uh -oh. Why, Douglas, of course we'd love to tell you all about it. It's just... It's just that here in the McDoggin household, we prefer to focus on the future. Precisely! But parents, I need to know these things to participate in Saturday's Cultural Pride Fair. Ah, well, you needn't worry, son. You are hereby excused for participating. I'll type up a note after dinner. Now, who wants strudel? <laughs> You'll have to excuse me, fellas. I've been doing some heavy research into Earth culture. Ah, the wonders of the taco. Cool, Letty. But check this out. My mom gave me her old Verdigrian Fligolin, played by my countrymen for centuries. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you two fellows have found cultural enrichment. When I queried my parents, they were oddly silent on the subject. Mine too! Now I'm gonna have to set up a booth about nothing! Hopefully not, Kurt. That's why I've brought you here, the Intrepidville Public Library. Surely that'll have some useful information. And some fliggling sheet music. History of baloney, here I come. All right, Kurt. These holographic cassettes ought to contain all the data on our two cultures that we need to know. Let our journey of discovery begin. The Cerebellians, a planet, a people, 
a cerebral way of life. The Big Book of Globulons! As history progressed, our innovative cerebellian forefathers advanced the science of reactive fusion, making the dream of interstellar travel a reality. A truly prodigious achievement! Blob people make all kinds of stuff! I made a pot! I made a wheel! I made a pot on a wheel! Useful! Without a cumbersome body to divert vital thinking nutrients, the cerebellian race has found itself free to push the limits in footwear fashion. When us globulons got tired of wearing animal skins, our fashion took a big step forward! They started wearing curtains! Um, that's not a curtain, my friend. That ancient garment is called a toga. Yes, we started wearing curtains! Viva la différence! Chapter 49.3 Interplanetary Relations Thanks to the precedent-setting Ninth Treaty of Ix, the Cerebellion Republic has enjoyed excellent relations with myriad cultures from across the universe. Let's face it, us globulons just plain like folks. Group hug! Hi! But the culture we'll always remember is the one who lives on the planet right next door, the Brady guy! <gasps> hey, Douglas! You and me aren't just neighbors now. Our people have always been neighbors. What a pleasant surprise. Indeed, the planet next door to our own is home to the Blobulons, a simple race who could have been valuable neighbors. If only they weren't so despicable. What's this now? In short, Cerebellians and Blobulons hate each other. They have for ages, and they always will. You heard me! Brains are crummy, and brains are dumb, too. We got no use for them, and we never will. We're supposed to be enemies? See, Gab, Kurt, it appears as though we are. I'm sorry, you guys, but that is just impossible. Blobs and brains hating each other? Yeah, you guys go together like corn chips and nacho cheese. I know, it seems unbelievable. Our local library's materials are often outdated and frequently incomplete, but they do tend to be accurate. And our parents did, after all, show an unusual reluctance to talk about our history. But it doesn't make any sense. What could cause your people not to get along? I don't know. But I suspect our parents do. Kurt, my friend, I suggest we march home right now and demand to be told the truth. Yes, son. I'm afraid it's all true. Long ago, the Cerebellians and the Blobulons became engaged in the most bitter of feuds. They hate each other to this very day. But whatever for? Oh, it's quite laughable when you think about it. They claim we stole their moon. Imagine, their moon. I'm afraid I don't follow. You see, son, a single moon orbits both the planet Cerebellia and the planet Blobulus. Fascinating. To most people, yes, but not the Blobulans. All they ever did was sit around in their curtains and stare at it. Meanwhile, we Cerebellians busily develop space travel. And thanks to our hard work and ingenuity, we established a scientific research facility on the moon's surface. Ergo, it belongs to us. Yes, but the Blobulans still stubbornly claim the moon belongs to them. But why didn't you ever tell me about this? Well, your mother and I have a policy of coexisting peacefully with the Blobulans. After all, considering their limited mental abilities, well, let's just say we, uh... We choose to overlook their shortcomings. And don't you worry, Douglas. If you enjoy playing with your friend Kurt, well, then that's good enough for us. Thank you, Father. No, thank you, son, for being so charitable. All right, Douglas. Now it's your turn to answer a question of mine. Yes, Father? How many Blobulons does it take to screw in a light bulb? I'm not certain. How many? Seventy-four point five! <laughs> <laughs> good luck, Father! Good luck! Okay, Mother, hand me that big light bulb. Mm. Yay! You did it! I sure did. But it would have been a heck of a lot easier with 71 and a half more people. Now, as I was saying, pretend this rock is the moon. Mm. Oh. Well, I guess I'll have to change that light bulb again. No, that's okay, Dad. I think I understand the moon thing. Then do you see how crazy those brain people are being? Yeah, Father Moon has belonged to our people since the beginning of time. He looks down on us at night and scares away the boogeyman. Now it all makes perfect sense. I'm sorry I never told you the whole story, son, but I didn't want you to blame your friend Douglas for all the dumb stuff the other brains have done. They can't help it if they think they're a bunch of know-it-alls. And sure, all them fancy words and big Facts can get pretty annoying. But for some reason, we've chosen to overlook all of that. So go ahead and keep playing with Douglas. And whatever you do, don't start hating his brainy guts. Don't worry, Mom and Dad. That could never happen to me and my good pal, Douglas. Watch it, McNoggin. Look out, Floberts. You two are going down. You but know it, Eddie. Not so fast, gentlemen. I believe we have you in our sights. <laughs> Quick, Kurt. Deploy the Pernubian phalanx. No, oh, can I get the cherries first? There's no time for fruit, Kurt. Deploy. Deploy. Yes. Toasted. We've 
beat you guys bad! That's two big lorp boys. Bring them to our usual table. Kurt, you failed to deploy the phalanx as I ordered, effectively nullifying our foolproof maneuver. I'm sorry, Douglas. The cherries look so yummy, I just had to have them. Had to have them? But their point value was infinitesimal. Infinitable? Oh, yes. Never mind. It's a matter of strategy and whatnot. It's really not fair of me to expect one of you people to understand. Me people? <laughs> Hi, Lloyd. Nice piñata. This isn't a piñata. It's a Verdigran wishing head. You see, back in the home planet, my people filled these heads with their fondest wishes, then throw them off a cliff. Good day, bloke. Mucho groovy. That's ancient Earth speak for cool. And speaking of ancient Earth, check out this traditional garment I found. A tuxedo? No, it's just a t-shirt, see? It's a sample of hilarious Earth humor. Ah. But perhaps we'd all prefer a sample of delicious cerebellian cuisine. Hey, all right, food. It's got to be better than this cafeteria junk they're serving today. Why, of course it is. It's cerebellian. I lovingly prepared it with my mother last night from a recipe passed down through the generations. Behold! <sighs> Rhizoma loaf garnished with a dollop of ectoplasmic ratatouille. Why, gee, Douglas, those are pretty big words for stinky. <gasps> stinky? For your information, Kurt, cerebellian dishes are beloved by culinary experts far and wide. Maybe it's because they stink far and wide. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta admit, Douglas, he got you there. I was up all night with my mom making this. It's a Blobulon specialty! It's a rock! Not just a rock, Douglas! A rock dipped in honey! Mmm. Want some? Uh, no thanks. Uh, that's all right. No, they don't want to lick your rock, Kurt. What they want is a piping hot mouthful of my rhizoma loaf. Uh, actually, Douglas, thanks for the offer, but now that I think about it, I'm not really hungry anymore. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kurt. These boys have a chance to sample some real culture, and here you go spoiling their appetite. I believe I'll eat my stinky food elsewhere before I lose my appetite as well. Good day! Brain people, what are you gonna do? Ow! Man, Lord, I'm glad you're coming along with that flig of lint, because I'm getting nowhere with this earth instrument. Whoa, Douglas, what are you doing? This is a cerebellion clog dance. In preparation for Saturday, I'm breaking in these traditional wooden shoes. Man, you got some funky moves. Yes. Well, my people, unlike some slower moving types, are endowed with a superior capacity for rhythm, agility, and coordination. Sweet serotonin! What is that infernal racket? You. No one can hear me dance! I'm singing the Blobula National Anthem! I'm breaking in these traditional wooden pants! Wooden pants? That's preposterous! And that song is a national nuisance! Oh yeah? Then why'd you stand up when I sang it? I was standing already, you dunderhead! Guys, hey, what is going on here? Yeah, you two are the best of friends, remember? I'm sorry, but I just can't help it! After years of putting up with his silly nonsense, I find my patience has finally reached its end! Everything they say about you people is true! Oh yeah, well everything they say about you people is twice as true! National Anthem! National Anthem! Oh really? National well take anthem, this! National Anthem! National Anthem! National Anthem! I think maybe it's time we had a talk with their parents. Well, here we are. You really think this is a good idea? Kurt and Douglas's parents get along pretty well. I'm sure all we have to do is explain how their kids have let this whole dumb feud thing get out of hand, and they'll straighten everything out. <laughs> Ah, Edward and Lloyd. Come to visit Douglas, have you? <laughs> uh, actually, Professor McDoggin, we were thinking we wanted to talk with you. Except... Hey! Keep it down over there, McDoggin! I can't hardly hear my own pants! National Anthem! National Anthem! What's going on, Dad? Oh, Sarah Brebre brilliant! Who's at the door, Father? Oh, it's that Blobulon boy again. The one I told you about. The one who made fun of my clogs. Ah, uh, yes. What's the matter with you, Blubberts? Can't you even raise your own son to respect other children? Well, you should talk. That brainy little bully of yours has been confusing my son all day with big words. Uh, excuse me, you guys, but we were kind of hoping to talk to you about... Step back, young Verdigrian. This is between us and the Blobulons. Moon Stealers! <laughs> That's Mr. Moon Stealers to you, and we are not! You are. That does it, Blubberts. I've had enough. We've tried to be enlightened about your kind, but it appears that you simply do not deserve the effort. Oh, yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, I don't understand what you mean. Then understand this. There can be Blobulons on this station, or there can be Cerebellions, but there isn't room for both of us, and I shall not rest until I personally have driven you out of here. Not if we do it first. <laughs>
Well, Eddie, you got any clever Earth sayings for that? Only one, Lloyd. Yikes. Pride Fair is turning out to be fun and profitable. I'm having a pretty good time, too. Mostly, I think, because Kurt and Douglas never showed up. Yeah, I gotta say, I think I've had enough cerebellion and blobulon culture to last a lifetime. If we're lucky, they're at home lying low and letting things cool off for a while. Whee! Huh? So much for lucky, Lloyd. Apparently, they were just off gathering reinforcements. Looks like big trouble. We better try and put a stop to it quick. Vice Principal Feely? Ooh, Nebulon. Fantastic, Fleeter Hosen. Are those real Fleeter? Uh, yes, sir. But that's not what I need to talk to you about. Look over there. Kurt brought a whole army of his people to the fair. And so did Douglas. Wonderful. Now that's cultural pride for you. Thanks for pointing it out, Nebulon. Ooh, funnel okay. cake. But, sir! Great. I guess we'll have to take care of this ourselves. Hey, whoa, I, I don't know, Lloyd. They all look a little mad. Blobby lads! Aha! I suspected we would find you here. Not if we find you first! <laughs> hey, hey, everybody! Uh, make lunch, not war, right? Yeah, enough of this confrontation junk. If you guys agree to be civilized, I got a whole pork to puss roasting in my booth, and I'll be happy to share it with all of you. We're not here to eat, Lloyd. We're here to settle a score, and these paisans from the old country have come to help. <laughs> I will not betray my grandfathers by allowing these simpletons to remain here one more day. This space station belongs to us! Well spoken, son! You think you're so smart. Well, you're right, but you're just playing wrong! That's it, Blubberts! It's go time! We're going down! Quiet! Quiet! Shut up! You know what? Cerebellions? Blubulons? It doesn't make any difference! Because as far as me and Eddie can tell, you're all just a bunch of big, fat babies! <laughs> How dare you besmirch the memory of my grandfather! Don't you make fun of us! <laughs> Great job, Lloyd. Now they don't just hate each other, they hate us too. Get them, I say. Get them! Run! Where are they? They disappeared with voodoo! Don't, their faces may get stuck that way. Or worse. You leave it to us, Douglas. We Cerebellion shall concoct a plan. This ain't time for thinking, smart guy. This is time for doing stuff. Oh, really? Hey, yeah. Kurt, can you get me down there? I think I can, Douglas. Then let's do it. <laughs> Douglas, the bottom of the well is five levels down. Perhaps we could access them from there. Boy, Eddie! will lose its artificial gravity for just a couple of seconds. See if you can make it over to this ledge before the power comes back on. Here we go! <laughs> what in the slim? Something's wrong with the gravity well, Dunkirk. Take the bridge. I'm going to investigate. <gasps> you did it, you guys! You saved us! I couldn't have done it without Kurt. And I couldn't have done it without Douglas! So maybe Blobulons and Cerebellions have something to offer each other after all? I'm sorry, Kurt. I'm afraid I've treated you quite atrociously. Whatever that means. I'm sorry too, Douglas. Want to be my friend again? I believe I'd like that very much. Are you all right? We're here, baby! Mom? Dad? Huzzah! The crisis has forced you to see the error of your ways. Just as Kurt and I pulled our efforts to save our friends, you've pulled your efforts to rescue us. Huzzah, I say! Well, actually, Douglas, I'm rescuing you. They've been out here arguing the whole time. They started it. Oh, yeah! Okay. Yeah. 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 
Thank you, Kurt. Mother, father, there will be no more arguing with the Blobberts. At least not in front of me. You're setting a terrible example. But, 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 but son... Apparently some traditions are best not passed down. If you have a problem with Blobulons, kindly keep it just that. Your problem. <laughs> do they have problems? Please don't say that, Dad. You might hurt my friend Douglas's feelings. But we got feelings, too. Don't you remember? They stole our moon. Uh, I don't need any moons. Nor do I. Father, my ancestors might have come from Cerebellia, but I am from Intrepidville. This is my home. A place where I live in peace with Blobulons, Earthlings, Verdigrians, what have you. Feel free to cling to the past, if you will, but not at the price of my future. Now all of you, go home! Yeah, you guys too! And mother, father, from now on, do try to act more grown up. Kurt, I believe I'd like to try some of that honey rock now. Coming right up! Lloyd, what exactly has been going on around here? Well, Mom, it's a long, long story. But I think it's gonna have a pretty good ending. Thank you.